Okay, uh, hello again, <laughs> and welcome to the 19th Deacon Economic uh, Seminar. It's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Hendrik Sonnaben. Uh, Hendrik has first studied economics at the University of Bonn and later finished his doctorate at the University of Hagen, where he now works as postdoctoral researcher in the uh, Department of Economics and Business Administration. Uh, he is a member of the Association for Cultural Economics International and the winner of the ACEI President's Prize at the 19th International Conference of the ACEI. Uh, his research focus is on applied microeconomics, behavioral economics, labor, cultural, and sports economics. And today he will present his study, uh, The Role of External Stimuli and Peer Feedback in User-Generated Content Production, Evidence from Fan Fiction. Uh, so, Hendrik, thanks for being here. and. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, welcome everybody, and uh, thanks Wojciech for for the kind introduction and uh, yeah, the the opportunity to present uh, research here. Um, so let me first move to full screen here. Okay. Um, as you may have noticed, we changed the title a bit so to make it catchier. The never ending book, and then the role of external stimuli and peer feedback in user-generated content production. So this is joint work with Maria and uh, paper hasn't uh, submitted yet. So every uh, comment is, is valuable and welcomed and yeah, looking forward uh, to hear your comments and suggestions and um, so on. So um, let me start from yeah the, the idea of digital, digital uh, technology or the, the representation of information in bits so from an economic point of view, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty much a game changer because it reduces the cost of storage, the computation and transmission of data. And uh, this gave rise to new economic phenomena like the sharing economy, like Uber, pricing in the face of uh, zero replication costs. So think about streaming technology and music and uh, user-generated content. So this refers to the idea that uh, consumers can become producers or uh, prosumers. I think this is uh, um, the right word here. Um, and for an economist, um, that, is, that is interesting because um, the, the public goods problem, the free rider problem is, is obvious. So you don't have to contribute anything or you don't have to pay to, to consume content provided by other users. So that's a bunch of literature asking what motivates users uh, to contribute content for free. And um, so we are connected to, to, to prior research that tries to highlight the role of um, different aspects in the um, user-generated content um, idea. So that started like 10 years, 10 to 15 years ago. So with the, with the rise of the digital um, economy. So um, an early paper is by, by Chen et al. It's a, it's a, it's a nice uh, field study carried out um, in, a, in a movie rating uh, community. So they, they wanted to explore the role of, of social norms and therefore they, um, um, they, they, they did it like that, that the, the treatment group um, got information about um, the median number of reviews in the community. And they found that, that users respond to it um, compared to the control group in that um, users with a, with a publication history or, or rating history below the median, they increased efforts or increased their output. Um, whereas um, the opposite is true for, for those above um, um, the median number of um, reviews. So it might be the case that there seems to be some convergence here um, towards this, uh, this norms. Uh, then we have um, the, the role of group size uh, explored in, in Sang and Tzu in their um, American Economic Review paper. Uh, they exploit um, a shock um, in the, the Chinese Wikipedia. So, um, so for some reason, uh, mainly in Chinese people hadn't uh, had access to, to the Wikipedia. And so it was um, the Chinese outside or the, 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 the users outside uh, mainland Chinese China that, that tried to 
um, keep up the activities and they show that yeah there's a strong effect of group size so it's uh, it, it really decreased uh, activities here um, financial incentives on the other hand they do not seem to work very well to stimulate um, user generated content so uh, at least according to to the study for, uh, by by uh, Cabral and Lee so what they did they um, they also conducted a field experiment with with uh, eBay so they, they tried to stimulate um, ratings uh, and and uh, comments in in the eBay system so after a successful transaction and uh, they gave um, a discount uh, to users or, or buyers of I think USB stick that um, that leave a comment or, um, or or rating and yet it hardly had, had any effect uh, here maybe because the incentives were, were small like one euro discount or two so um, so this turned out not to not to have a very strong effect um, then there is a, the idea of a, of a virtual circle so that past activities predict current activities so users see okay there's something going on and this is, this is also a paper um focused on um on wikipedia um editing activities so yeah you, you can say that there's something like a virtual circle uh here and then but what I, what I really like the the, the effects of non-arbitrary awards so users don't get paid that but they get some kind of badges or golden golden awards so it's it's, it's free it's costly but it's yeah it's there's some symbolic value here and this this really uh, encourage uh, users to to uh, to produce more content, and this is um, this effect is more pronounced for for uh, for newcomers. So they get the feeling they're they're part of the scene. They get this badge and so on, and this is um, this this, um, this really uh, encourages them. Um, another interesting paper is on career concerns. So this is from a question and answer website. Uh, where the where the authors Xu et al also has information about the, the job status and they can see it okay um, once a users change the job status because they got promoted or found a job um, somewhere else um, there's a drop in activities so the, the interpretation is that they try to to build up a reputation and and yeah look how smart I am and so on um, but yeah once they reach the goal the career goal then, then it drops. So uh, the sources are mainly, or the, 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 the data sources for these studies are mainly from, I would say, informational websites. So it's, it's about facts and, and so on. And this makes it, it hard uh, to look at what we, are, uh, what we are after it, the stimuli coming from the subject itself. So, and um, yeah, what, what we do in the study is um, that we that we want to understand um, stimuli in user generated content in a, in a very special setting. It's it's the fan fiction, and I think you're not familiar with it, so I will talk about it a lot um, in a minute. But yeah, the, the 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 general aim of the study is to to identify stimuli of content production by consumers, and this stimuli comes from the original work itself. So this is new. And stimuli coming from the community, so we try to corroborate um, existing results here. Um, but um, there's, there's also a, I think, unique feature in in this uh, community because, um, and I will talk about it also uh, um, quite a few times, that feedback has to be positive and constructive. So it's it's not so to to put, to put it in a simple word, you have to be nice, and this is unlike other. Parts of the internet where yeah people get hostile, people get rude, and so on. And you yeah this this kills our creativity, but but here it's it's very important and it's um, um, it's demanded in practice that it, you you have to be kind. You have to not to cheer um, cheer um, every piece that is published here, but um, if you don't, if you want to criticize, be nice. Right. So talking about fan fiction. Um, so the basic idea is um, you're a fan of, of something like a, a TV show, a book, a movie, a computer, to so take the narrative as a starting point for your own stories. You incorporate the existing characters, you invent new characters, you change the storyline, you invent new settings or other elements um, and combine it and make it your own. So fans are no, no longer just consumers. 
uh, but they're also creators and motivators. And uh, I think it's very astonishing that there were that there are early examples of, of fan fiction 100 years ago from, from fans of the Sherlock Holmes stories and, and Jane Austen books and so on. So um, it's not it's not uh, it's not a, um, um, it's not an innovation of uh, the internet age. Uh, it was there before, but of course uh, the, the community idea though this is something new. And um, yeah, fan fiction became or uh, people uh, um, um, yeah noticed that that there's something going on um, at the latest when the when the when the Fifty Shades uh, trilogy uh, got published and the movie and so on because. Initially, it was fan fiction. It was a Twilight fan fiction um, by uh, E.L. James, uh, whose pen name was Snow Queen, Snow Queen's Ice Dragon. So I think she's still on this, uh, this web page, or at least her stories can be found there. But there are there are more names uh, to be um, added to this list, like um, Cassandra Clare, um, the author of Mortal Instruments, which is itself uh, a target of fan fiction right now. Or, for the for the for the re uh, recent years, but she was also a popular fan fiction writer, and um, I think she 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 was writing Harry Potter stories or something like this. Um, the website or platform it's it's fanfiction.net. It's uh, yeah it's it's a rather for for, for um, in terms of of the internet it's a rather old uh, platform. Um, technically, it's a it's a online archive for fan fiction. The largest of its kind, so millions of stories, millions of users. Um, authors have full control over their content, so they can upload it, but mods can delete or send the stories. Um, then there are tools for the community to interact with each other, so um, you can follow authors and stories, you can leave reviews, uh, and more simplified positive feedback here, like ferreting. Are you following a story or something? But this is what we, we know from other areas of um, uh, social media. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, uh, the, the, uh, this is uh, um, a novel element is that the community etiquette requires respect for reviews, um, including criticism. Um, so you don't, you don't have to cheer every piece, but if you want to criticize, be kind. And um, it's not just cheap talk here, it's, uh, it's practiced. Um, this is this is an example of um, yeah reviews for a piece that yeah was very popular more than five thousand reviews or comments so very big uh, there there are some hints for like uh, slightly negative uh, slightly negative attitude like uh, why uh, um, why took it so long uh, for for the story or that that, that uh, people are complaining about. Yeah, some some characters, but as you can see, in a in a nice way, right? Um, in, a, in a constructive way. And uh, even for for newcomers like um, this one here, you the fallen fallen ice angel. Well, it's lots of angels here, I think. Um, she only receives uh, uh, seven uh, reviews um, for her piece, but uh, it's also encouraging and uh, yeah, positive. Okay, um, of course, like in like in other um, areas of of, of um, yeah platforms of this kind, we have an um, um, very uneven distribution of this attention. So there is a small share of superstar writers, and um, they there are there are expectation towards these writers, right? Um, for example, um, um, a colleague of mine who is, who is from um, media studies and uh, she's, she's doing her PhD work on, on fan fiction. So she's saying that uh, some popular fan fiction writers, they, they have their own Instagram channels and, and people are asking uh, about the next, uh, the next piece and text. And then, yeah, so um, they're, 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 they have quite some, some, uh, some popularity. And uh, now in our setting, what, what you want to examine is uh, what happens when they ex um, when they are exposed to new material, right? Uh, and there's a trade-off, we think, between um, writing something fast or take more time to uh, to develop a more thought-through story. I mean, there, there, there are two drivers here. On the one hand, we have incentives 
uh, to be first of the herd. So, so it's it's kind of a competitive environment with with several um, popular writers even even in the scene. And I mean, it it might it might pay off in in terms of attention to be the first of the herd. But yeah, there there are also quality expectation um, from um, from the audience. So we we think there's kind of a trade-off which we want to examine in in, um, in our study here. Prior research on um, on uh, the role of competition in creative work says okay some some moderate level of competition can foster innovation, but um, when it when when uh, when competition becomes too strong, okay, people produce more, but um, at the expense of innovation. So let's see what what happens here. Um, so to to sum it up, so um, the fan fiction community, I would say, is a space for creative people to open up, even in a young age, um, try themselves, find their own voice, and it's it's like a starting point for for creative um, production. Yeah, and as you as I've I've already um, said there are there are there are popular um, examples of uh, of writers starting here and turning into a professional writer. Good. Um, if you have questions, just ask. Um, I think I cannot um, pay attention to the chat, but yeah, I think Wojcik will 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 inform me when when there's a, there's a question. Right. So coming coming to our to our study. Uh, and the data and the analysis. Um, so we collected data from three sources. Uh, obviously, fanfiction.net. So we, we, have, we were focused on books. Um, so we collected every entry um, in the category books between uh, 19, uh, 1999 and 2017. Uh, in some, uh, almost half a million observation from over 2,000 different authors um, devoted to um, 2,342 um, source texts or books. Um, and you can see from, from this um, from these figures that uh, there has to be a substantial uh, proportion of one time. So people publishing one text and then leaving the community. Uh, we have information about the language of the text, the uh, category where the category refers to uh, age recommendation. So it's, it's not uh, adult. Um, literature here, um, it's it's um, um, but it's but yeah there are there are uh, age recommendation for I would say zero to six zero to twelve and so on and uh, yeah when you when you upload uh, a fan fiction text on the website you have to decide uh, to which category your text belong. Then the genre like adventure or romantic and uh, yeah. So on a number of chapters, the, the upload date, uh, the, the text status, finished, unfinished. Um, we, we we do not think that this uh, this is this is a very um, this is a very important variable because I think it, it just says that um, authors um, I want to express that it might be possible that they add some more content to it, but uh, yeah, we we pay attention to to this. Set as variable, we, we take it as a control variable in our model, but um, yeah, from, from the letter, what's it's not, it's not a very important variable, not 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 like the the, the name suggests, like finished, unfinished. Uh, uh, for example, we do not find differences in um, in community responses um, depending on the status. Then we have information about the writer, which <laughs> I have to admit is reduced to, to the registration date, so we have. Um, an idea of the fan fiction age. So, for how long does he or she belongs to the community? Unfortunately, we we don't have information about uh, gender. So, um, authors can fulfill profiles on the websites, but it's um, it's free, so um, you don't have to. And um, this side the fact that yeah, um, it's 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 just a uh, um, yeah. Would say a smaller proportion of users uh, that, that that really uses this, this profiles. I, I would say it's um, yeah, it's it's a uh, um, this is not mandatory. Um, it's first of all, it's it's hard to get um, uh, from a technical point of view, and um, yeah, but 
let's do not talk too much about what we don't have. Let's <laughs> talk about what we have. So we have um, uh, the community responses. Like I said, there are three types of it, reviews, followers, and uh, favoriting. And we think that um, these types of feedback differ in, in quality. So you, you can learn more from, from the reviews compared to just followers or favoriting, um, apart from the fact that, that, that even those are encouraging. So it, it means that you get your text get attention. Um, then for the uh, stimuli coming from the original work, we collected data from the release date of books and movies uh, from the series, like uh, when did uh, the, the new Harry Potter book got, got published or the movie got published and so on. Collected from uh, Wikipedia and uh, Goodreads, which is also a user feeded um, online uh, database I think, uh, for books. Right. So uh, some summary statistics here. Um, yeah, contribution um, per month. I think it's nicer to, to have it uh, plotted here. We can see there's an upward uh, trend in the number um, uh, of, of monthly uploads. Um, we have some kind of kink uh, at the year 2014. We don't know why. Uh, we have checked for legal issues. We have checked for um, competing websites, but I yeah, haven't, haven't taught anything. So if, I, um, if someone has an idea, please tell me. Uh, we just uh, acknowledge the fact that we have to control for time trends. Okay, it started um, with a small number of observations in the, in the very early beginnings, and there's uh, exponential growth, and um, in a point of saturation or in kink, it goes down a bit. Um, yeah, this is something we should take care of in the um, in the econometric analysis. Um, contribution per original. Um, so um, I think it makes also sense to include this information that there are um, different source texts of books that are targets because um, it, it might work as a sub community. So some community like the Harry Potter community might be more lively than the mortal instruments community or yeah, something like this. So this is also something we um, we account for in the uh, economic analysis. Then contribution um, per author, it's very uneven distributed. I will talk about it in a minute. So the, the mean number uh, um, 2.4, but we have writers with more than 400 texts, but also some writers publishing only one text and the leaving community. And this same very uneven pattern, um, something we, we can we can observe in the in the in the number of words uh, here, ranging from uh, short text to very long text. And uh, for this uh, community feedback variables, it's uh, might be um, worth mentioning that the mean of these variables, uh, um, um, the means are very similar. So no big differences here. This might imply that um, if you if you write a review, you're also favoriting or, or following the text. Uh, right, only showed this one. Um, so these are the, the top seven, I think, um, uh, source, source, sources, books. So the, the king, of course, Harry Potter. Um, and we have others. Most of them are, are, are book series. So this is what we make use of in the, um, for the analysis. Um, I think it's just the Phantom of the Opera, which is not a, um, um, have this book series format here. Um, right, um, some more observations. So these are um, correlations between these uh, three different types of uh, community feedback. So while favoriting and following are, are very closely related or correlated, um, the, the, the correlation between um, reviews and the um, two other types is strong, but not that strong. Okay, so I think it's, it's easier to, to click and follow uh, than to really type in words and, and uh, yeah, go deep into text criticism and so on. Um, yeah, I've, I've already said there's a very uneven distribution. So um, 
words count and output varies widely. So this is what we can observe in, in other areas of social networks uh, when, when users are allowed uh, to contribute openly. So um, some users uh, contribute much and the majority of users don't, okay? And um, for, for, uh, um, for fun, I fitted a, a Pareto distribution to, to our distribution here of fan output. And uh, it's, uh, it's a, um, I've got an estimated shape par um, parameter um, of a bit more than two. It's, it's like um, wells in society. So it, um, wells um, uh, in society um, also has this, uh, this shape parameter of yeah, like two, meaning that we have some people with very, very much money and yeah, the majority um, of people don't have yeah, that, that much resources. Um, most of the authors target only one, one original work, but there are also writers um, targeting two, uh, two texts. It's, uh, it's rather rare that, 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 that authors target more than uh, two texts here. And uh, yeah, uh, talking about writing time. So, so the median writing time is about one month. So this is a, a time span between two, two publications. And uh, of course, if you, if you com compare the median with the, um, with the mean, um, yeah, this points to strong outliers. So you, um, um, you register um, to, to the website, you publish a text, then something happened in your life and you come back to it a year later and okay, this looks like um, it takes ages to write a story, but um, I think the, the median here is more trustful. So take about one month. Okay, um, just to see how uneven um, the, the numbers of or the distribution of, um, of publications um, that the authors are. So we have uh, more than 60% publishing only one text and yeah, some, um, some big group publishing uh, yeah, like a handful of text. And then we have this segment of top writers um, on the right hand here of the graph, uh, which yeah, who, who published really lots of text. Um, okay, so coming to the analysis, um, first of all, um, stimuli coming from the community. So the role of peer feedback here. Um, again, feedback is nice. So it's not that uh, you get destroyed by the community. You have to, you need time to, do, um, um, to, um, to recover. So it's, it's mostly nice feedback. Uh, and how does this feedback affect the propensity to stay in the community? So you're a first time writer, you've published your text, um, people respond to it. And what difference does it make if you receive just seven uh, reviews or 17 or 17? Right. And what we, what we do in the empirics is we set up a model that looks like this. So single, is, uh, is a binary variable, which is one if um, the first the first time text is, or the debut is the only text of this author. So the text got published, the author leaves um, the community, um, at least as an author. Um, and uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a binary variable, um, variable um, taking the values zero and one. So it's a, it's a probability. So what we want to explain is the probability of leaving the community. And uh, our main uh, independent variable or focused independent variable is uh, feedback, which is a placeholder for this three types of feedback, various followers and favoriting um, received by uh, the author of text I. Then we have a set of uh, text related fixed effects. Um, yeah, like the genre dummies, the language, uh, this rating, which I called category in the beginning, but, but it's, yeah, it means the same, uh, like age recommendation. Um, then um, the, the, um, the original work. So, um, and we have month and year fixed effects because we have seen that there's this increase and the drop after it. So we should, uh, should account for it that, um, uh, there should be differences then. Um, 
months fixed effects help us to um, to control for seasonality. So I think there's some other studies from IT guys that looked that uh, had, um, had examined a uh, data set from from this fan fiction website, and what they found is that um, it's yeah that it also seems to to be from uh, from uh, from Western countries because there are there's an increase in activities in holidays like in the summer and winter holidays. Um, and so we have to control for this um, also. And uh, of course, the sample is restricted to, to debuts. So um, because we, we, we want to um, estimate the probability that um, adjusted um, the debut and not more. So um, of course, we, we're losing lots of observations here, but it's still uh, samples big enough to, uh, to run these regressions. Um, we run this regressions in an, in an old regression framework. We, we did additional robustness checks with um, maximum likelihood estimators, and it's as always it's, uh, it's pretty close uh, to, to, to our results here, which I present right now. So what we find is that a one percent increase in reviews for the debut text decreases. The probability to leave the community um, after um, the, the, the debut or the, the first publication uh, by around um, 7.4 uh, percentage points. And this effect is more pronounced for reviews uh, compared to favoriting and um, and following. So this is this is liked uh, like to be expected, and it's. It's so also in line with uh, prior research uh, on on the role of peer feedback. So Birchard also show that um, receiving more feedback from from peers is or uh, receiving feedback from peers is, is more important for uh, newcomers in a community because they, they feel include the, 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 they have a feeling of inclusion and so on and feeling that um, 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 of um, of getting recognized and um, so on. So um, the sample mean is 0 0.611. So evaluated as a sample mean, uh, this first coefficient means that we have a decrease of around uh, 12%. So newcomers that receive one percentage point more, um, one percent more reviews, um, they are uh, less likely um, or their probability to leave um, after this text is decreased by around 12 percent. Okay, this is this is what the number says, and as I said, it's pretty in line with prior research. Good. Then we moved on and, and asked. Can I have a so? Can I have one question? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So, can you tell me if these uh, reviews, uh, favorites, and followers is this the number like from the same month as the uh, debut work, or is this from uh, I don't know, like the number of followers is ever or from this particular period? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, unfortunately, it's it's a number of total reviews. So we don't know about uh, the timing of the reviews. It would be very interesting. Um, I think at most for the for the um, for the second part with this with this exposure to new material, um, how how um, how the authors, but but also the community react in terms of of reviews and um, community uh, activity, feedback activities. But yes, yeah, I said it's just a number. So for uh, for each text published on the website, there is um, there is there are um, it's it's uh, it's associated with some figures. So one figure is the number of reviews, and it's uh, I think um, the total number of reviews up to the point where we collected the data. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so let's move on to uh, to time span. So, uh, what what effect uh, what effect does feedback has on uh, on writing times? Um, so the model pretty looks the same. Uh, so writing time is the, the time elapsed uh, since the, the last contribution. 
And um, what we what we included here are um, author fix effects. So the, they account for uh, um, unobserved and, and time stable characteristics of the auto. So if you uh, if you if you're um, um, a type of author that uh, needs more time to produce text and so on. We have some preferences here and there, and we cannot observe this in the data, but it's uh, included in this um, fixed effect. So from from technical point of view, it's uh, it's allowing for um, for different or author specific um, levels here. Um, yeah. So of course, writers with only one text were discarded because. We, we need to calculate time spent here. Right? And this explains why, um, again, the, the number of um, observation differs. So, ah, okay, this is, this, is, this, is, this is also something new here. We, we also introduced a new variable called contribution count. So it's a, the number of prior publication by author J. And the idea is that we can, we wanna use it as a proxy for experience. So the idea that feedback Make, uh, may work differently for, for first time or second time also, but um, compared to, uh, to an author that has published 20 texts or 50 texts or something like on, uh, like this. So we would expect that the, the effect will weaken. Um, um, yeah, and this is what happens. So uh, what we can see is that um, uh, peer feedback increases writing times. So we depress this to mean that um, writers put more effort in, um, in working on the text before they publish it. So it's something like a, a positive pressure. Maybe they need, need time to, to work with, uh, with existent uh, reviews on, their, on the foregoing text. Um, we also uh, detect that um, this effect diminishes with um, with experience. So the coefficient here of this interaction uh, with, the, with the contribution count is negative, meaning that um, yeah, the effect diminishes, the effect of uh, feedback. And again, um, we we can see that the, the effect of reviews is twice as high as for ferreting and following. So this suggests that. Um, Mm, yeah, mm, that um, people really care about what's what in the reviews and, and, and try to work with it here. Um, good. So, mm, yeah, I think I've talked enough about this um, table. So, last element of um, the way community feedback works here in our study. Uh, so we looked at the number of work. So, so how much do authors write and what role does feedback uh, play here? Uh, again, the model pretty looks like, um, well, pretty looks the same, like the foregoing model. So now uh, what we wanna explain is the length of the text. I written by, by author J at time uh, T and on the right side, it's pretty the same variables here. Um, yeah. Um, so something interesting happened here and it was a, a hard nut to crack for us. Um, but I think we, um, we found a solution. So uh, when we uh, estimate the model without author fixed effects, so this is uh, the first three columns here. We can see uh, that there's um, um, or the, the first two, sorry, the first two columns here. We can see uh, that uh, increasing the number of reviews. So it's like the same for the other types of feedback, but I just present reviews uh, here because I need, I need more space uh, uh, here to, to explain the story, the whole story. So uh, the, the first results were, yeah, they, they fit to the story. Okay, um, you got more feedback. You try to, to write more to, to please community and so on. Um, so um, this, this result says that um, if the number of reviews for the 
prior text increases by 1%, the number of words for the current text or the, the text published after the, the um, text where, where you got the reviews from um, increases by uh, yeah 27 percent which is a lot but then we included author fixed effects and I think it makes sense to include author fixed effects because it controls for I mean uh, like an um, average uh, or preferred text length and so on so so we look at um, with an author um, variation here so um, the question is how reviews affect um, um, authors in, in, their, in their writing style expressed in the number of words. And, and what we find here is um, that it has a negative effect. Not that strong, like 6% smaller, but a negative effect on, um, um, on the number of words or the extent of text. Uh, and then this is, of course, uh, it's a bit puzzling for uh, for an econometric because, yeah, what what happens here? What what uh, what is the magic in the in the author fix effects? And then we say, okay, it, this may point to this as, ex, as I explained earlier, this this very heterogeneous pattern or writing pattern in the on the um, internal and external margin, meaning that we have um, some authors writing a lot. Others don't. They're they're newbies. They're they're more experienced also. So it's it's a it's a very uh, complex mixture here. And what we are looking here are uh, average effects. So the also fixed effects will will uh, will provide us with a with a more detailed picture. But um, yeah, I was um, challenged to 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 find out what what happens here. So so what I did is, or what we did. We grouped um, authors according to the average number of words. Okay, so um, there's there's this, um, there's distribution of number per words per text per author, and we we grouped it acor uh, um, according to the percentiles of the distributions, and uh, so the, the um, short text writers, middle text writers, and so on. I think uh, five or six groups. I will text this in a, minute, in a second. Uh, and then we have rerun the model as to and and have looked at this. Um, what is it? Um, the gamma, the, the, the estimated gamma here. So the, the effect of feedback. And, um, and these are estimates. Yeah, this this one here, uh, the, the, um, the estimates for the review for the different category of writers. So this is the first category um, within the, the, uh, um, the 25th percentile. And we can see for these, for these guys, Increasing feedback increases text length. Okay, for well, the others, and and in in um, in um, uh, in ascending order here, um, it means that there's decrease. It has a decrease or dampening effect on on text length. And our explanation is that that there's some some idea of an optimal text length. So the reviews imply that these guys. They should um, um, increase the textes. They, they are, they, these texts are too short, and people say, "Yeah, it's good, it's nice, but you should write more about it." These guys, they say, "Oh, come on, guys, it's <laughs> it's way too long. Please shorten shorten the text a bit, and so on." So this is this is our story here. Uh, but what data says um, the effect of of feedback. But this is what we can uh, say for sure has um, heterogeneous effects here. Um, among the, the different type of writers. So these are the, the superstar writers here, writing very, very long text. So here, here the effect is strongest <laughs> that they um, shorten, shorten the, the, the text by, uh, yeah, between uh, 10 and 20% um, after the, uh, they got reviews from, um, or the, the, the reviews increases for the, for the um, before text. Good. Um, so that were uh, stimuli coming from the community, from within the community, and now um, we we're looking at stimuli coming from the original work. And as I said, this is hard to examine um, in other areas of of user generated content. Um, but here, as as 
yeah, users are um, attached to a, um, to a certain topic, to a certain topic, and, and then we have a quasi exogenous shock here, the release of a new book or a movie. Um, yeah, it's a, a it's an nearly ideal test bed to um, to to ask these kind of questions. So, uh, how does the release of new content affect uh, our fan output? And uh, as I said, we have this book series, and yeah, we can look what happens uh, when there's the release of, of a new book or a new movie. And there might be speculation on what will happen in the, in the new Harry Potter, but you will uh, you you won't know unless you read it or you watch the movie. Okay, so um, it's what we could call a quasi um, exogenous shock. So um, as I said before, um, 33 out of the top 300 titles in our sample uh, have this book series structure. Um, and there is one output at least, or there's at least one new release of the core movie in, in our sample. So we can see, okay, there's an author publishing um, fan text before this shock and afterwards and yeah we can we can we can see what happens here so uh, this is uh, the list of uh, books don't know if someone's interesting in, in reading it was just saying okay it's all to this heterogeneity in in the number of fan texts with um, harry potter being the leader and then it goes down to below 1000 contributions um yeah so what we first try is um, to examine whether um, the release of a new book or a movie triggers more contributions. So do users uh, feel stimulated to, to produce more uh, here? Um, and uh, what we did, we... we um, followed Grady and Lieberman and uh, yeah, what um, and um, proposed a model where uh, we have the number or the monthly number of fan texts per topic, like um, uh, all of the, um, the Harry Potter stories published in one month. Um, on the left side of the creation, this is what we want to explain. And our main explanatory variables, this, these are the, the seven binary vari um, variables um, indicating the months before and after the release and right and, and, um, and the months of the release. So three months before. So, and this, this helps us to, to see, okay, is there an uh, increase uh, before or, I mean, the obvious pattern would be a decrease um, or, yeah, I don't know what what we what we'd expect. So, uh, uh, um, uh, from of course, since uh, since uh, people need time to read, there should be um, a decrease afterwards and then an increase or something something like this. But unfortunately, the model did not really work, um, and we, we we found no direct effect. So each of the coefficients of this dummy. Uh, had had, um, had no um, explanatory power, so it doesn't really help to explain what happens here, um, which raises the question if the complexity of the writing process can be pinned down to this monthly measure, if it's really good. I mean, we, we decided for, for a monthly measure um, or in the choice of, of the dummy variable of the model because it's, it's, a, it's a median um, time span. So um, I think the, 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 um, the time interval as a whole was, um, it's, it makes sense to use it, but um, there, there could also be countervailing effects. I mean that someone want to be uh, first of the herd, want to publish fast, others take time, read, uh, develop stories and so on. So uh, long story short, no effect. Um, if we look at monthly contribution um, line graph by Harry Potter, so I mean, uh, um, at least for me, it's hard to find a pattern. I mean, we have we have some events where we have um, a decline before, 
um, and then um, an upward movement like here. So some kind of idea, but and here, but it also we, we have events like this. Where we have a plateau and then this drop and yeah, it's for the whole sample, uh, we, we didn't really um, find uh, find anything that uh, yeah would um, would reveal a certain a pattern that we can capture in in, uh, in our estimation model. So we moved on and uh, looked at writing times. Uh, and here we um, we used uh, a hazard model, like maybe some guys uh, know this survival models in medicine. So we have a bad diagnosis and yeah, the, the big medicine data says how long do, uh, will, you, will you live and so on. So this is something like this. What, so what we model here is a hazard to publish a new text. Okay, this sounds a bit odd, but uh, this technically is uh, what happens here. So uh, we, uh, could, we could also say the, um, the likelihood of publishing, yeah. Um, and we model it uh, like the standard uh, Cox regression model. So uh, this is uh, the, the baseline function and this is um, the set of covariates um, you're familiar with already because it's the same set of, of covariates we, we've used in the um, community feedback um, section. Uh, and uh, yeah, what, what we define as a treatment group are those writers who, um, who got exposed to the new original uh, content like the book or the movie. And we also account for the, the, the heterogeneity here among writers. So we, de we define stars of the scene or, or top writers to be writers in the 25th percentile of publications. So they've, they've already published some and in the top percentile of, uh, of followers, yeah. Um, and this is what we found. So this is uh, the beta coefficient of, of the hazard model, which doesn't say much about probability. So we'll talk about probabilities in a minute, but what we can say is, okay, <clears throat> this, uh, the release of, of a new book or a new movie um, prolongs writing time. So writers need more time after the, the release of a new book. Uh, and uh, this effect is even more pronounced for, uh, for top writers, for, for the elite of, uh, of writers in the community. And uh, so um, we, can, we, can, we can take this estimated beta coefficient and we can uh, translate it into probability. So this means that this is 0 0.77, which we have here means uh, uh, around, um, um, means a more than 50% decrease in the likelihood of a new release. So it, it has a really dampening effect uh, on uh, the time span between uh, two releases. And as I said, it's, it's, um, it's more pronounced for the top writers. And uh, yeah, we think, so our interpretation of this is, is a good sign because um, there, there, there are no, Quick responses here, um, despite the incentive to, to, to be first of the herd. And, and um, I mean, we could also um, imagine a red race between these writers. So, who will, um, who will be, um, be first to present the ideas on how um, to deal with the new content and so on? But, but this doesn't happen. So, they take time to read and they try, they take time to carefully develop um, um, a story. And I think the, the, the obvious explanation. Are a quality concern, so you don't want to disappoint your audience with a with a um, with a with a fast shot and and uh, uh, not not thought through story, right? Don't want to disappoint. Um, um, and this this also so 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 we've looked at okay, so so, so there is um, a new fan pub, um, um, publication after the release. Uh, of the new book or the movie, and yeah, as a proxy for for quality or let's say how uh, or, or audience response or attention, let's let's see what uh, what happens with the with the uh, with the favoriting or, or the amount of favoriting, and we can see okay for the for the for the average writer there's a small decline, 
but yeah, hardly significant at the 10% level. But this is not true for the top writers. For the top writers, they still deliver, which again, I think speaks um, in favor of our story that there is some um, sort of quality expectation these writers want to meet. Right, so um, let's wrap it up. Um, we um, studied um, user generated content um, that is affected by community feedback and new input shocks. Uh, here we find that feedback in line with prior research encourages writers to stay in the community. It increases text uh, or decreases writing times, meaning our reputation is that. Um, that there is some kind of positive pressure um, exerted on um, the writers with more feedback. Um, and it decreases text length for, for most of the writers, for these writers who, for the, for the uh, long story writers, but not for the short story writers. So the idea of an, of an, of an ideal text length here. Uh, for, for the release of new material, we find that it um, increases writing times. The effect is more pronounced for the top writers, but it does not spur on average uh, more contributions. Uh, explanations or, or discussions. Um, so, so we really like the idea that that this is this is, this is something good, right? That that um, we have this user attention that may work as some sort of quality control that that prevents uh, um, um, un, 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 yeah, um, works that isn't isn't well de um, developed, uh, fast shots and so on. So um, the community feedback encourage um, novices not to leave, to stay in the community. Um, we have this positive pressure, which is more pronounced for um, for the top writers. And we think um, there's this, um, this, um, this, the setting allows for, um, yeah, uh, getting constructive feedback for for um, being focused on story quality because we have this review tool and we have this community guidelines. I think I think it's a um, it's a um, it's a combination of both. So um, you can collect reviews, uh, but you have to be kind. And uh, in case you ask for um, for an um, external validity of our results, I think. When I when I've sent um, the manuscript uh, of the study to Wojciech, um, it's um, it's pretty much the same. So I was expecting uh, some kind of reviews here, but nice, <laughs> but nice reviews, right? And this is how uh, how creative works develops, right? So you need feedback, but it, but it should be nice. And um, um, in our point of view, uh, it makes a case for. Um, using this this combination of um, allowing for feedback um, and and a, and a strict and practice uh, of um, of community guidelines of, of a code of conduct how um, feedback should look like um, that 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 may yeah help or that that may uh, be to the benefit um, of of other um, users that creates contest and yeah, beyond that um, UGC, I would say, um, let's take um, the, the, the platforms like SoundCloud or um, yeah, a comparable a movie platforms. You can, I think it would be great if we could, um, if there would be a possible to upload uh, early work to get feedback from it. And um, that, that this feedback would be nice. I think this, uh, this would um, improve um, the community output in terms of quality. And okay, this is beyond our, our study, but, but also in, in the, in the, in the well-being of, of users. Good. Um, so thanks for listening. And uh, I'm looking forward to your, to your comments. Thank you very much. And so, uh, do we have questions? If yes, please just unmute and go ahead. You can also write in the chat if you prefer to. I have some, but 
I can wait. Okay, I'll just start then. Hi, I'm Sophia. Um, and I was just totally inspired by your work and that's why I have a lot of comments and questions, <laughs> but I'll just try to stick to the, um, yeah, to the most important ones or yeah, the stuff which was most interesting for me. So um, you embedded your work into the um, user generated content, right? And um, I'm, I come from a background of social media. So I was directly into social media and then I was wondering, okay, that's, that's different kind of user generated content like reviews, you don't have the network of interaction and um, you write a review and you don't expect feedback, right? So I was wondering about the categorization or how do we actually, and I think there is nothing about, at least I haven't read anything about that, differentiating between the differences of user-generated content. And then, um, but that's, I don't know, um, that's more of a thing we did um, a few years ago, talking about user-generated content and actually, um, the, the whole term about prosumers, consumption, no, no prosumption, stuff like that. Um, we actually thought about that from an economic point of view, you always had producers who also go shopping. So um, from an economic point of view, it's very, for us, I mean, um, and maybe that's, I don't know, something to think about is um, that these terms are normally not really used by economists, especially the presumption stuff, since we always had the different roles, but it's roles, it's not one person who um, creates content and consumes content, it's one person, it, the person can be consumer, it can be producer, but in the moment of posting something, you're producing and you're producer, in the moment of your scrolling, you're actually consuming. So, um, and that's the same thing for traditional markets where you could have been a producer of something and then next moment you go shopping and you are a consumer. So it's not about the person, but about the economic role. And um, that's just something we were thinking a lot about and maybe it helps your ideas of that, um, but that's more of a comment than uh, question and also I have a comment on the um, author gender stuff you told I think that's uh, for my part from my point of view that wasn't really a problem because um, you don't have the information about the gender but um, of course the readers don't have the information about the gender so they can't discriminate against specific genders and I think if you explain that and if you just say um, it's not that important, so to say, and kind of and then it's not too um, not too problematic that this information is missing. Um, yeah, and then coming to your models, the first model was binary outcome, right? It's you either stay in the market or not. And what I learned um, with the yeah, with my econometric background is that if you have binary outcome, you should use a log it or profit model rather than OLS. But maybe I didn't get your um, modifications properly. Um, yeah, that was just an idea. And then about the, I think it was model three with the, with um, how long what text is. Um, and I'm thinking because I also kind of did a lot of research about superstars and then we also have this very screwed um, models or very screwed um, distribution and maybe you want to check out quantile regressions for that because then you could um, you look at the different quantiles and maybe see differences within those quantiles maybe already considered that I was just thinking about that randomly when you talked about it. And <laughs> I don't want to monopolize, but I, uh, I was just, I think it's really, really interesting. And um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just, um, oh yeah, with the last one with the contributions. Um, so that was original work. I was wondering if that made an increase in comments and activity on the platform. So not so much into new contribution, because as you said, that takes more time and um, to actually write it, there was a new book out and then you write your next um, um, book or next text, uh, there but there might be more traffic. So 
maybe that might, since you have, yeah, this dependency of reviews to um, contributions and so on, that might be interesting. And yeah, I, I, I think it's really interesting. I was just uh, talking to my colleagues before and actually um, I just learned what, what, um, what um, fan fiction is. And they told me that at our university, we have some, some students who read their fan fiction on YouTube and it's about uh, erotic Harry Potter stories. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, Sophia. Uh, um, uh, great comments. Um, and uh, if um, if there's more on your list, you can you can uh, please feel free to contact me. I would be I would be happy to to answer email or um, yeah telephone or something like this. Uh, starting with the last point, I think it's this is a this is a, a toxic box uh, to open because uh, this erotic uh, things and game is the spark and so on. I would I would I would leave it <laughs> because if you end up in an you want to end up in an economic journal um yeah and it's 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 um, it, um it's speculation so uh, as i said this this website does does not allow for um uh, for um the other content so but yeah it's it's um it's the elephant in the room right it's um yeah <laughs> what happens here so um i've i've made some notes and i i, I go through it um, I'm, I'm not dogmatic regarding the notion of user generated content and consumers. It's just a way to motivate the story. And I think um, it, it contributes to the uh, strand of literature like this Wikipedia stuff. So people, people use it, people, people create, and, and it's, it, um, it's online. But, uh, but you're right when, when we think through it in an, in, an, in an hard economic way and say, okay, you consumer, you consumer, you, um, you producer, it's, uh, um, yeah, you, it's, um, it, yeah, it's, it's not obvious that this is, this really takes, um, belongs to this, uh, this category. Then um, you're right that, that, that uh, gender discrimination is not, it's not an issue here. Um, I would share this, this thought, but it would be interesting to have this information to look whether uh, males or females respond differently or yeah, very young people, uh, older people respond differently uh, to feedback. And of course, in, in cultural economics seminars, this is the first question you got, <laughs> what about gender effects? Um, so, so I speak frankly, <laughs> we don't have it here, but, but it would be nice to have. Um, then um, the, um, the estimation of a, of a model where you have a, a binary um, dependent variable. This is uh, this is the same. So if you if you submit a paper and you you use um, um, the OLS, um, um, in my perception, one of one of two reviewers says you should also present um, estimates from a from an ML estimation. Um, from my point of view or from my experience, what works in OLS will work uh, in that too, um, um, unless you have some weird um, mm, uh, estimates like probabilities um, uh, outside a zero one um, uh, interval. So then you have a problem, but it's, it ne never happened to me. And um, of course, uh, in the paper, we also presented um, logic estimates uh, here and marginal means, and it's pretty looks the same. Um, what um, it's it's a more convenient way um, if you have very big data and lots of variables. So the the, um, the maximum logic estimator takes ages, um, even on a fast computer, to to converge. And there's also lots of dropping for for this um, for the dummies where you have. Or, um, uh, adjust a few number of observations. So this is why we stick to the OLS and yeah, because it's, it's easier to interpret unless you, you use um, marginal means in the um, logic um, model. Pointer regression, excellent idea. So we will discuss this. Um, and, um, and I know this is superstar literature and I think it, it makes sense to, to, to do it. Um, the new material, so at, um, or the the, um, the question whether the new material um, spurs community activity. So this is a good one, and we already received the question. So I said we sent this uh, paper out, and, and someone also got the idea. 
problem is that that we don't have the timing of the review. So this is what um, the watch has, uh, uh, has asked. So we just have the absolute the total number, and we don't know. It would be great to, to see what happens. I mean, there was also a comment um, whether um, whether users uh, hesitate to contribute stories because they wouldn't they, they don't expect much uh, community responses, right? Uh, because people need time to read, they don't have time. Yeah. Um, to read um, the fanfic stories, but uh, this is um, this this unfortunately uh, is beyond our data. Um, but yeah, it would be really interesting uh, to know. Great, I think uh, that's that's all. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And do we have more questions? Yes, yes, I have a question. Hi. I'm Satya. Thank you very much for, for your presentation. I just wanted to add because at the beginning you said that that all the reviews are positive because of the community guidelines and and I wondered whether uh, you gathered the reviews and uh, analyzed them in any way so that you actually know whether those uh, reviews are positive or on a scale somehow uh, on this positive scale somewhere placed. So it's not only the number. Yeah, uh, Satya, thanks. Uh, fair point. I think uh, Karol also, Karol Bobeki also uh, said that uh, it would be a good idea to to collect uh, reviews and uh, send it to the machine uh, that that um, that will give you uh, like a like a sentiment score or, or, or something like this. Um, so our impression is that um, the the rules for feedback are, um, are very strict, and um, there there are there are some complaints in um, in the forum, in this in the fan fiction forum. So um, um, so um, to um, to directly answer your question, no. Um, uh, uh, we haven't, so we're acting on the uh, on the assumption that feedback is mostly positive. When we um, when we uh, um, took a small sample of reviews and um, and run through it, so there there were no harsh words and not 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 reviews that could destroy um, writers and and um, and so on. But yeah, it's it's an assumption. So we we don't know for the whole sample and and. Um, in case we want to know, we should we should do it like collect all of it and send it through um, through a machine. Um, yeah, but let's hope that we get through through the review process without. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks a lot. Hi, Hendrik. I'm Jose from Spain, from Madrid. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I think it's very interesting. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. A user generated content and. I mean, working as well with user-generated behavior, and I think are topics that are always hot topics. So for research, it's very interesting to work on this kind of research areas. Uh, regarding my question, I don't have them, but I have a, a few suggestions. So I've been working with user-generated content for five years now, and I think, yes, for future research, may you are interested in working using user-generated content, uh, but applying uh, algorithms that work with sentiment analysis, topic modeling, textual analysis, and just not using them, but also combine them in order to extract insights and create additional knowledge. I think that is one of the key points we have now in this industry. So as you know, we, we can collect a lot of data from different social networks, such as Twitter or Facebook. So I think uh, those would be uh, future research questions or points that would be great to you to work further, and that's it. Thank you. Thanks, Jose. Um, you're absolutely right. And um, I also noticed that, that this um, analyzing of, um, of, 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 of sentiments and, and um, yeah, what what kind of words are used in, um, in comments and so on, this is, uh, this is, this gets stronger and stronger and there are, there are software, there are tools. So, um, so I even expect this um, in in, um, in, um, in cultural economics um, um, a research that we that, that, um, that there will be papers and um, in um, uh, in due time. Uh, absolutely expect this. So this is beyond, as I said, this is beyond our story now. But um, yeah, it, it would be really interesting to look at it. Uh, absolutely. 
thanks everyone. I think we slowly will have to be finishing. Maybe I'll just ask one quick question or and maybe I'll send some more later in an email if that's fine with you. But going back to these uh, reviews, <laughs> that's a uh, that, that, that uh, let's say bothers me a bit because if I was uh, reviewing, that's probably what I would also ask. Uh, my worry here would be that uh, when you look, for example, at what makes people contribute more than just the first text, um, I'd be worried that, for example, those who make further texts that those get read and because people read the further text, they then go back and read the first ones and then also review the first ones and favorite those as well, for example. And that I think would somewhat bias your results in that, yeah, they have more reviews, but also they have more reviews because they have work, did some further work as well. I think it would be good, great if you could say at least this, something about whether this is at all an issue. Because if you, for example, grab a few texts and the reviews, with, because I think it, it's just not feasible to collect everything, right? But you, there are single reviews with the dates there, right? You could, like, for a very small sample, if you could, for example, check if this is something that happens at once someone did a lot of other texts do people still return to the first one and get reviews there maybe that's not an issue at all so maybe this this would be something you could implement yes um absolute valid point and um let me say that in the manuscript we we've already downplayed um the importance uh, of the results because i mean um another account founder is, um, is writer's talent, right? So the more able writers receive more reviews and more comments and more attention, and um, talent uh, also leads to uh, to higher probability to stay in the community. So the so argument is that, that the effect is in line with prior research using uh, RCTs, so uh, very clean, very clean results. So um, I think this, this allows a bit to, to, to say that there could be some, some encouraging effect. But um, what I've learned today is that um, the, the, the kind and timing of reviews is important. And uh, your, your suggestion with a, with a small sample um, um, example um, is good. And, and um, I will discuss it with, with, um, with Maria. It's, uh, it's a nice, um, yeah, easy out for, for, for this kind of problem, I guess. So thanks. Thanks for the answer. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one last quick question, if I'm still wait. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so, as you collected all the entries from, from the book categories. Yes. So another thing I was wondering is if it's possible that some of the authors in your sample have actually created other fan fiction, but that it just wasn't book related, so it's not in your sample. Mm, but, but. Uh... Mm. We, or am I confusing something? Maybe I'm we've, we've, um, we've collected um, information on the author level, not on the. On oh, the, okay. No, no, um, on the um, on the on the text level, not on the author level. So it's not like uh, author I gets like two hundred reviews or, or something like this, but yeah, text J got two hundred reviews. Yeah, but uh, okay. So these are all okay. What what's the book category here? It's a fan fiction based on books, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but there's also other categories. So probably fan fiction based yeah. on uh, uh, movies, for example. Yeah, but that's not in the sample, right? No, no. Okay. But you do have information if the authors in the sample created, for example, film-related fan no. fiction. No, we don't know. Okay. So, so that's uh, kind of what I'm thinking is that whether these uh, authors, for example, maybe they did more works, but they were not book-related, but were related to some other stuff. And my, maybe you're not seeing this in your sample. 
the same way and whether this could affect any of your results. Okay, good point. Um, I took a note. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, no more from me. So thank you very much for this very interesting uh, presentation. And <clears throat> hopefully we'll see each other at the next uh, seminars. Next week, uh, Satya, who is here, is going to present also a bit related, I mean, in the sense that it's also user-generated content, but uh, the on Roblox game platform. So please, please uh, come if that's something that interests you as well. And again, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And bye-bye. And bye-bye.